Obviously, a lot is on the docket this election. We have literally never been in a situation like this before. A generation-defining pandemic has everyone at home, but with more time than ever before to educate themselves about social justice and policy issues. We find ourselves at the very crest of a technological wave whose suggestive algorithms corral us into echo chambers and make us doubt the very meaning of the word truth. We navigate an ever-changing web of interconnected devices, where every day the procedures for safety and privacy become more advanced and more necessary. A lot is changing, and it's more important than ever before for us to be educated about what is on our ballot. Today, we are going to be discussing a California proposition, Prop 24, that seeks to put control of your data back in your hands, and to lead the way for the rest of the country to answer the ever-cryptic question of how to protect consumers online. So the history of Prop 24 is actually really important to discuss because, as we're about to see, we've actually kind of been here before. Who is drag racing? It is like 11.30 p.m. Why wasn't I invited, jerks? Anyway, we've actually kind of been here before. In 2018, tech giants and their shady data gathering processes found themselves cast in a pretty harsh light. Facebook's emerging Cambridge Analytica scandal, for example, was among the catalysts which incited the call for more privacy protections for consumers. A hitherto unknown real estate developer from San Francisco by the name of Alistair McTaggart apparently had an idea in the shower in 2015 for a ballot initiative that would install extensive new regulations on tech companies or any companies that handled private information, and, crucially, that could only be amended if the legislature managed to wrangle a whopping 70% supermajority. He enlisted his neighbor, Rick Arney, and a former CAA analyst and lawyer, Mary Stone Ross, to collaborate on the proposition, funding the effort himself. The prospect of regulations that required a 70% supermajority to be altered was highly unfavorable to politicians, and specifically alarmed state senator Bob Hertzberg, who, when he saw the traction the initiative was gaining, reached out to McTaggart with a deal. They would work together to craft not a ballot initiative, but a bill. And once that bill passed, McTaggart would withdraw the ballot initiative. Swayed by Hertzberg's assurance that this would both expedite and empower the process, McTaggart agreed. And in June, the California Consumer Privacy Act was unanimously passed. We had high hopes for this data privacy law, and yet, ambitious though it was, the most ambitious in the nation, in fact, it quickly proved inadequate. The intention was to give Californians control of the data companies collect and sell on them. They were supposed supposed to be able to view all data collected, opt out of the sale of said data, and force the company to delete any data they'd already gathered. That, to me, sounds great. That sounds like exactly what we need in this brave new world. But due to some hasty drafting and gaping loopholes, this is not at all what we got. The CCPA does specify that users can opt out of the quote sale of their data, but this wording was quickly exploited by tech companies who argued, well, we don't sell user data, we just transfer it to companies like Facebook to more accurately sell subscriptions and advertising, so we're not selling the data, we're just moving it around. Merp, yeah. The CCPA also provided an exception for service providers who need user data in order to perform a business purpose. I literally cannot think of a better way to word that if you want to appeal to Silicon Valley tech giants, or a worse way if you're trying to actually affect any change whatsoever. Unsurprisingly, companies like Facebook and Google have seized upon this language, arguing, well, we have a business purpose, micro-targeted advertising. These two things essentially geld the entire CCPA because it means targeted advertising is exempted, which is definitely the most central justification for how and why users are tracked online. An article in The Wire compared it to exempting coal plants from a law promoting clean air. And even if the law did actually impose any regulations, it doesn't give any power to enforce them. The original ballot initiative was supposed to let any Californian sue a company that violated the regulation, but that provision was eviscerated by tech company lobbyists in the revision process and ultimately was removed from the law. Not only that, businesses can even avoid any kind of punishment for a violation if they cure it when it gets flagged. These flaws made the law so ineffective and were so outrageous to its champions that when it was passed, Ross disowned McTaggart and stopped speaking to him entirely. When this law took effect, all it did was 
demonstrate public interest in privacy, which in my opinion, promoted companies to make the problem worse because now they're just interested in providing you with an illusion of control. They'll put up banners allowing you to choose don't sell my data and then proceed to do whatever they had already been doing and were always going to continue doing no matter what you chose because of the sell versus share loophole, which means they weren't officially doing anything wrong by profiting off of your data anyway. The CCPA is without power, without guidance, without effect. Alistair McTaggart himself is quoted as saying, we literally didn't do anything. We did all this work and Google can still take your information. Facebook can still put a pixel on a website. All they have to do is have a contract with that website and one of the business's purpose says it's advertising and marketing and boom. That attempt has been a bitter failure, but the need for a privacy solution remains. It's time to try again. And that's where Prop 24 comes in. In a bit of an ironic twist of events, Hertzberg, now majority leader of the California State Senate, suggested to McTaggart that they give legislating internet privacy another shot. And this time, actually do it the way McTaggart had originally intended, bypass the legislative process and fund and draft his own ballot initiative instead. One which would improve upon the CCPA to make it into what it was always intended to be. Proposition 24, aka the California Privacy Rights Act, is intended to strengthen the CCPA, to hold companies accountable for consumer security, and encourage the rest of the nation to rise to meet California in the race for improved digital privacy and cybersecurity. The initiative means to patch the gaping holes in its predecessor, changing the CCPA law's do not sell provision to do not share or sell, and specifies that targeted advertising does not count as a business purpose, so it would not exempt companies from having to provide provide the user with opt-out options. To combat the weakness of enforcement in CCPA, the initiative creates an entirely new governmental agency dedicated to investigating and demanding privacy protection. It requires the legislature to approve $10 million in annual spending for this agency. And honestly, my biggest hope there would be that it leads to more informed court cases concerning cybersecurity. I've heard too many stories of consumers losing out to mega corporations when those corporations get breached because no one on the legal team is capable of understanding who's responsible for the data, or of whitish gray hats being sent to prison because neither their defense attorney nor the judge could understand their case well enough to adequately defend them. To appease the objections that first got a turn from initiative to law in 2018, Prop 24 allows the legislature to make future changes with the usual majority vote. However, that is only in the case that those changes strengthen the purposes of the law. If they would weaken it, you'd need a higher percentage. Now this sounds more like what I'm talking about. We deserve to live in a world where the most personal details about our lives can't just be stolen and sold to make some CEO richer. Where we aren't being exploited without our consent just by interacting with technologies that the state of society has made essentially inescapable. Especially now with COVID-19, many of us, actually most of us, don't have a choice anymore about whether or not we want to use these platforms. We at least deserve a choice in whether or not we want to be used by them. This law would also provide stricter regulations for how companies are allowed to handle sensitive information. Remember when we talked about how I've been pwned.com and how your data is getting leaked all the time because the websites that you enter it on don't have strong enough security to defend themselves? Theoretically, this would offer guidelines to those companies on how to strengthen their defenses. And I'm hoping that the formation of this agency would help to enforce punishment, or at least more robust investigations should there ever be a breach. In my opinion, as much incentivization as we can do to force companies to protect their customers' private information is never too much. Think of marijuana dispensaries. Not a California exclusive issue, but a California specific one nonetheless. This relatively new category of vendors is responsible for protecting and storing not only PII, personal identifiable information, but also PHI, personal health information. However, that industry has been notoriously slow and inept at adopting good cybersecurity practices. In fact, my team at Grizzly Shield has personally uncovered several vulnerabilities in online systems used by these companies. I'm not saying hospitals are incapable of being hacked. In fact, that's happened pretty consistently throughout history. More on that in a future video. But I am saying parties storing similar data should require similar protection for that data. Your health information is still your health information, whether it's being stored on your hospital server or the server of your local dispensary. To me, if this initiative actually achieves what it hopes to do, it could be an incredibly positive step towards getting us the freedom and safety we 
damn well deserve. This world has been digital for many years now. It's about time we started legislating like it. But like almost everything else in this world, Prop 24 is certainly not perfect. Objections come against what's being dubbed as pay for privacy, a clause that states that businesses can charge users extra if they want to opt out of having their information shared. However, turns out this permission is already established in the CCPA, and companies are only allowed to charge the value that they would have derived from the data. But I kind of feel like this leaves a dangerous loophole. I just foresee some mega corporation making an argument that the amount of money they would have derived from a piece of data is like some astronomical amount, something none of us could afford, forcing us to consent to allowing our data to be stolen, making us complicit in our own exploitation. Not that we aren't already, but now we're like paying for it. The biggest disagreements over Prop 24, however, are about how it's supposed to be interpreted. The thing is 52 pages of legal jargon and detailed technical descriptions that all sub depend on cross-referencing one another. Like the amount of pound include statements in this thing is literally exhausting. <laughs> but like, here's a pretty major example, the global opt-outs clause. So currently, the CCPA requires companies to honor a do not sell request, even one that is sent automatically by a plugin or a browser or a device. Even if the request is automated and not manual by a consumer themselves, it still should count as a request under the current CCPA. Basically, if you have a plugin that automatically says do not sell my data for you so you don't have to explicitly say it on every website, the CCPA would force companies to honor that. But on Prop 24, on the bottom of page 17, it seems like businesses are offered a choice in this case. Option A is to have a do not sell or share my personal information button on their homepage. And option B is to comply with global opt-out requests. That would imply that the opt-out request sent automatically by your browser or plugin or device would no longer be respected, so you'd need to go through and enter them all manually. But then just a few paragraphs later, Prop 24 clarifies that all businesses will be required to comply with the global opt-out, regardless of whether the business has elected to comply with subdivision A or B. So the choices on page 17 were actually choices between if the business wanted to charge users for opting out, in which case they'd be required to actually have a physical do not sell or share button so that if the user opted out, the business would then have to explain, okay, you will be charged for that decision versus the other option, deciding that you would not charge users for opting out, in which case you don't have to make the, the explicit button, but the opt out, still has to be an option in both cases. So I don't know, honestly, with that clarification, it sounds like maybe it was just poorly written, but actually much stronger and still does a good job. And frankly, that's the sense that you get if you read anything that McTaggart himself has had to say on it. He's quoted as saying, the reason I've spent this stupid amount of money, which he estimates is around $10 million, is because it's not that visible. No one actually sees the magnitude of the struggle. But the reality is, if we don't get this right, the world that my kids are going to grow up in is going to look completely different than it would have looked and than it should look if we just get a few simple steps right now. Having heard him talk about it, I have to say, I'm swayed by his passion and kind of convinced by the fact that he has put so much personally at risk and just seems to be like, for the love of God, I want to fix things. Why won't they just let me come in and fix things? But I might be biased. After all, I want this kind of legislation and thought so bad. I think it's so important. So I want to know what you think. As you guys know, I am totally self-taught and self-researched. So please share in the comments your opinion on this and how you think all of this should get solved. And if any of you live in California, I am especially curious to know your opinions on this. If you ever heard of the CCPA before, what what do you think about it? Also, if you live anywhere with different or more robust digital privacy protections, I would also love to hear about that. So please share if you have time. And also, you guys know by now, but this video is made in partnership with Grizzly Information Security Solutions. If you use marijuana dispensaries, you should definitely make sure they approve of it. If you are a marijuana dispensary, you should call them. And if you came from TikTok or the Discord server, this special hello is for you. Love you guys. Stay safe. Until next time. Leave my window open, pretend you come inside Can't fix what isn't broken, can't miss what isn't mine I drive around the city so I don't go Hello cutscene friends! If you watch the cutscenes, wow! Hi. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow, I'm absolutely terrified So I had to take everything dangerous out of my backpack that I bring every day So I'll just be here, doing this
<laughs> but uh, that means this is our code word for today. If you if you see this, comment BIC so that I know that you're one of the real ones. <laughs> Thanks for watching.